Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much to Dr. Shah, Dr. Yoon, uh, Jody, and Ted for joining us today. Uh, this will be our uh, COVID briefing on December 7th for our community in Stanford. And I will get started. Um, I'm honored to be with you all. My name is Caroline Simmons. I'm the new mayor of Stanford and looking forward to uh, continuing these briefings so that we can make sure we're getting timely information out to the public so that you're aware of uh, the latest information on COVID-19 and what steps you can take to protect yourself and, and your family. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are at over uh, 788,000 total U.S. fatalities from COVID-19. Uh, this tracks the uh, average daily rate of COVID-19 cases among persons living in community settings per 100,000 population by town. So you can see back in June of this year, when we thought we were almost uh, over this pandemic, we had less than five cases per 100,000. Uh, and uh, as of December 4th, we had between five to nine cases per 100,000. Um, but as of today, we uh, broke over 15 cases per 100,000. So we've seen uh, a steady uptick in cases uh, over the past uh, several weeks and months. Uh, this chart describes uh, COVID-19 cases in Connecticut per 100,000 by town. So you can see the good news is Stanford is doing much better uh, than other cities in Connecticut. Uh, we are the most vaccinated at over 80% of our pop population is vaccinated. Um, and we also have uh, the lowest case rate among other cities. So you can see the trend that uh, the more vaccinated we are as a city, the lower case rate we'll have. Um, and you can see uh, we're, we're much lower than uh, Waterbury and, and Bridgeport, Hartford, uh, New Haven, and Norwalk. Uh, this is the, the trend in COVID-19 hospitalizations in Fairfield County. Uh, we currently have uh, approximately 103 hospitalizations in Fairfield County. Uh, this is much better than where we were back in December of 2020 when uh, we had 375 total, um, but we're still seeing a concerning rise in hospitalizations. And I know that our Stanford Health team will describe more details on our hospitalization rate at Stanford Hospital. Uh, this shows the breakdown on COVID-19 cases by age. Uh, you can see the majority of cases now are uh, people 59 years old and, and under. Um, you know, the reason for that is that the majority of our population, uh, 65 plus, are vaccinated. So um, this is a reminder to encourage everyone who is eligible to get vaccinated. Uh, this shows our daily positivity rate for COVID-19. We we're just over 4% uh, in Stanford. That's our daily positivity rate, uh, which is better than what we were back in December of 2020, when we were at over 12%. Uh, this shows COVID-19 cases in Stanford per 100,000. Uh, the blue line here you'll see is in 2021. So we're uh, just at 20 cases per 100,000 uh, for our seven day average. But you'll see back in 2020, uh, we were over 90 cases per 100,000. This shows uh, our, our population by vaccination status. So you'll see 78% um, of those who are eligible are vaccinated in Stanford. And this shows a, an age breakdown. So um, the best group 65 plus are 99% are uh, vaccinated. Um, and then we're working to make progress on uh, those who are five to 11. Uh, that's our uh, least vaccinated group. So we're encouraging everyone um, who is eligible to get vaccinated and to get your kids vaccinated. That shows uh, the vaccination rate per town. Um, and you'll see again here that the most vaccinated cities uh, have a lower case rate. So uh, West Hartford is the most vaccinated uh, city in Connecticut. Um, and then uh, Stanford is the, the second most vaccinated city. Um, so you'll see that our case rate is, is lower uh, than other cities. So again, just a reminder that uh, the more vaccinated we are as a population, the lower our case rate will be. 
Um, so with that, I want to turn it over to our experts at Stanford Health. We're honored to have with us uh, Dr. Shaw and Dr. Yoon, who are going to present more uh, details on uh, Stanford case numbers, uh, Stanford Health updates, and important information uh, for our community about the latest on the Omicron variant. So uh, with that, I will uh, stop sharing my screen and, screen and turn it over to uh, Dr. Shaw and Dr. Yoon. Great. Thanks, Mayor Simmons. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm Dr. Shaw. Thank you for having me today. I'm going to, oops. So some of the data that I'm covering, actually um, Mayor Simmons already covered as well. Um, so some of it um, we'll, we'll go through a little quickly. Um, but as was mentioned, um, obviously things um, are kind of going in the wrong direction in terms of the, the number of new cases of COVID, COVID. This is a picture of what's going on around the whole country. You can see that the total number of cases are up, um, hospitalizations are up, um, and unfortunately mortality is up around the country. And in Connecticut, um, as in the state as a whole, um, we also see um, a significant rise in the number of cases over the past 14 days, 32%. Um, a very big increase in our hospitalizations and deaths. And if you look at the breakdown of hospitalizations by county, um, that's what this first pie graph shows here. And you can see that Hartford and New Haven counties together bear kind of the majority of the inpatient COVID census. Fairfield County, 21%. This is data as of yesterday when the total hospitalized census for COVID in the state was 525. What's striking to me is on this graph at the bottom of the slide here that shows that this really massive increase, um, we more than doubled our inpatient COVID-19 census um, over the past four weeks um, in the states. And now we haven't really been above 500 um, since, you know, as Caroline mentioned, since back in uh, December um, of 2020 and January of 2021. Um, a common question is, you know, who's being admitted? Is it people that are vaccinated? Um, and the, what we've seen is that 75% of, um, about 75% of the inpatient census are in individuals who are not vaccinated, right? So that's not surprising, but we're still seeing anywhere from 20 to 25% of those inpatients being fully vaccinated. And what you can see here in this, um, this shows the daily growth rate over the past two weeks of our COVID census. And again, significant rise um, recently. So Mayor Simmons showed the top uh, kind of uh, map in, in her slides as well. But what was striking to me about all this data is how quickly things have changed. And this is comparing uh, case rates by town in the state um, from literally a month ago, so October 24th to November 6th, and comparing it to November 14th to 27th. And what's striking is that how much more red the, the, the state looks, right? So, so many, the majority of towns now have um, very high rates of, of COVID. Um, and in terms of community transmission, which is a metric that the CDC uses, Fairfield County um, a few weeks ago was yellow and yellow means moderate transmission, which was the best we had been in quite some time. And over the period of the past month, um, we are now back in the high transmission zone of COVID and, and, and in fact, the entire state is. Who is getting COVID and where? Um, as Mayor Simmons mentioned, 73% um, of the new cases um, over the past couple of weeks have been in individuals under the age of 50. Um, as we know, our elderly population in the state is much better vaccinated than the younger folks. What's striking to me here in this graph is if you look at ages zero to 19, it's a lot of cases and kind of our school age children. Um, so very important for five and above to get vaccinated. And again, if you look at the average daily rates by county, Fairfield County is in this dark blue line here um, compared to Connecticut as a whole, which is in the sky blue line. So we're actually doing a little bit better compared to other counties in the state, but again, unfavorable trends um, that are seen you know, in all the counties statewide. Stanford Hospital um, positivity rate, this is data that we look at every week. So 
Um, this mean, this is every test, um, COVID test that's done through our testing site. Um, and we look at the number of positive tests over the total number of tests that were done. We saw a significant increase last week. Um, our positivity rate was 7.29%. And the prior week was 4.6%. So again, also in line with kind of the, the unfavorable trends we've been seeing around the community. Um, and in terms of our Stanford Hospital Census, um, our current inpatient COVID census is a total of 16 patients. Um, so not nearly as much as what we have seen in the past, um, but I can tell you that last Monday, so just a little over a week ago, we only had four patients. So we've you know, seen a quadrupling of our inpatient census in the matter of a week. And similarly, 75% of those patients are unvaccinated. And if you look at just those patients requiring critical care, so those that are in our ICU or intermediate care unit, they are all unvaccinated. Um, so just to touch briefly on Omicron, because um, I feel like this is front of mind for many people. So um, Omicron is a new variant of concern. Um, so in addition to Delta, now we have the second variant of concern called Omicron. On November 26th, um, it was classified by the WHO as, as a variant of concern. It was first um, identified in South Africa. The variant has a lot of mutations, um, 30. Um, and, and those 30 um, are occurring in the spike protein. And that spike protein is what's responsible for our vaccines essentially to work. Um, and it's likely that this makes Omicron more contagious um, and possibly less vulnerable to the body's immune defenses. Um, so preliminary data suggests um, that it will um, be a more infectious strain, but we're still kind of learning more about it. And we have limited information about um, kind of the clinical manifestations um, due to the fact that there have been a small number of cases so far. Um, there have been no unusual symptoms seen to date in the cases that have been described. Some patients are asymptomatic, and in fact, symptoms seem to be milder in individuals um, that are vaccinated or who have previously been infected with COVID. Um, so again, you know, the common questions about Omicron, which we can't 100% answer with certainty at this point, you know, how does this impact my vac vaccination status? How does this impact how I'm treated for COVID, how does it impact how I'm tested for COVID? Um, so the anticipation is that um, the vaccinations may not be as effective against this variant, but we still don't know. Um, and so there's a lot of studies that are underway to assess the impact on vaccine efficacy. And what we've learned so far is that individuals that are fully vaccinated against COVID that have gotten Omicron have very mild um, illness. Um, this variant may also have an impact on some of the monoclonal antibody treatments. Um, and so that's something that is being explored as well. Um, this will not, having an Omicron variant infection does not affect your test um, accuracy. So the tests that we use to diagnose COVID will pick up, um, you know, whether you have a Delta variant or an Omicron variant. Um, it won't impact that testing. Despite the detection of Omicron, um, Delta remains the predominant strain in the United States and in Connecticut. Um, and the first case of Omicron was identified in Connecticut over the weekend. Um, but despite that, Delta remains um, kind of the, the predominant strain. So, you know, the recent emergence of this variant emphasizes the importance of all these mitigation strategies to fight the pandemic, right? It's been almost two years. <laughs> Um, but it really emphasizes the importance of vaccination boosters, ongoing prevention strategies, which Dr. Yoon will, will cover. Um, but just as a reminder, everyone above the age of five should get vaccinated against COVID and boosters are recommended for everyone above the age of 18, regardless of, um, of your underlying condition or your um, occupation. It's strictly based on age. So I'm actually going to hand it over to Dr. Yoon um, to cover what's next. Great, thank you, Dr. Shaw. Thank you, Mayor Simmons. Um, just to add um, on this discussion of vaccines, 
I think it's really important for everyone to remember the purpose of the vaccines um, and much of the studies that have come out because there has been a lot of information that's come out over the past couple of years and it can be oftentimes very confusing. I think we wanted to highlight here in this slide really the two take home messages when it comes to um, vaccines. Again, everyone five and older and boosters for everyone 18 and over. Those are really the take home messages and a reminder that the vaccines are here to accomplish several things. One, we want to decrease the amount of transmission, and we know that the vaccines help do that. We want to decrease um, those, um, those patients who develop severe disease, and we want to prevent unnecessary deaths. And that's what the vaccines are here for, and that's something that we want to make sure that people continue to get the message. Dr. Shaw mentioned that with some of the variants now and in the future, perhaps the vaccine doesn't work um, as well, and that's that's something that we're going to have to figure out as more data becomes available. But we do know that it works, um, and nothing is 100 percent. None of our vaccines are 100 percent, and I think that's a message that we want to make sure that we get out to the public as well. Some people think, well, you can still get infected or reinfected um, after you get a vaccine, and it's true. I don't think anyone's going to deny that because none of the vaccines are 100 percent. But we do know what the vaccines will do in terms of decreasing the risk of transmission, decreasing the risk of severe disease, and decreasing unnecessary deaths. So please do keep that in mind. In addition to that, if you look at our next slide, this is just a reminder of the fact that we have these mitigation strategies that you've been listening and hearing from us um, time and time again over time. How do we risk, or excuse me, how do we reduce the risk of um, transmitting disease and getting sick? Vaccination, first and foremost, foremost, that seems to be at the top of everyone's list at this point in time. But don't forget all the other things that we should be doing in terms of layered prevention strategies. That includes masking, making sure that we're masking uh, appropriately, well fitting masks, social distancing. That was something that we were doing very early on and, and um, need to continue to do to prevent the spread of disease. Hand washing or hand hygiene. That's something from the very beginning um, for COVID and other respiratory diseases. Uh, we've been talking about for years in terms of prevention of uh, the transmission of flu and other respiratory diseases, other diseases, hand washing um, and hand hygiene. Staying home when you're sick. Um, I know and this is the season of giving, but COVID is not something that you want to be giving to other people. So if you're not feeling well, stay home, um, don't risk it. And then testing. We talked a little bit more about testing, or, um, or we will be talking a little bit more about testing, but it's important. Early on in the pandemic, testing wasn't as readily available, but it is far more readily available now. And so testing... Um, if you're symptomatic, if you have symptoms of uh, a respiratory illness or after a known exposure to someone with, with uh, COVID, it's going to be important to use testing appropriately. And I know even those circumstances can be a little bit confusing. So ask your healthcare professional um, if you have questions or call the health department. Um, we'd be more than happy to help you. And finally, remember that um, there's been a lot of discussion about whether you need to uh, quarantine, if you've been vaccinated or not vaccinated. That's true. But we do know that people who are COVID positive, who actually get sick with the disease and have a positive test, need to isolate for at least 10 days, regardless of your vaccination status, whether um, you've been vaccinated or not. It's isolation of 10 days with improving symptoms and um, remaining afebrile or not having a fever for 24 hours without uh, the use of a fever reducing agent. So please remember, these are the kinds of prevention strategies that we've been talking about, we will continue to talk about um, because they work. Uh, and finally, as we go into the holiday season, here are some things that you may wanna keep in mind um, to try to celebrate the holidays safely. Get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. That's a, that's a message you're going to hear time and time again. Um, it's way up on the top of our list. As I had mentioned before, well-fitting masks um, in public indoor settings are going to be important, especially if you're not vaccinated. 
it's going to be important that you you wear those masks um, to prevent transmission or contracting the disease. Uh, and then again, especially uh, we talked about before how uh, transmission rates and case rates have gone up over time, and we're on the uh, we're on the rise now. So especially in communities such as ours where we have substantial or high transmission, it becomes even more important that we're wearing appropriately well-fitting masks in indoor settings. Please keep in mind that outdoors is safer than indoors. And the idea there is it's better ventilated. Um, there's more space for people to separate. We talked about social distancing. Um, if you're able to open windows to get more ventilation, um, that decreases the risk of transmission. And obviously avoiding crowded places, whether indoors or outdoors, also reduces your risk. As I mentioned before, the idea of staying home when you're sick or if you have symptoms, um, one of our colleagues, Dr. Uh, Michael Bernstein, coined the phrase on a previous uh, webinar, when in doubt, sit it out. You know, if you're not feeling well, don't risk it. Just sit back. Um, you can always catch the next one. And then we talked about getting tested. Whether you're symptomatic, um, whether there's been some risk of exposure, or for travel. Uh, and if you have to travel, please try to use safer travel options. Um, and don't forget to follow local and international CDC recommendations about requirements for testing uh, before and after traveling, uh, regardless of if you are um, vaccinated or not vaccinated. And again, please remember to layer these strategies. It's going to be um, greater use, more use of each of these strategies are going to incrementally uh, reduce your risk of transmitting disease, getting sick, um, and, and having problems along the way. So um, I wish everyone a happy holidays. And these are, these are ways that we're gonna to try to keep it as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shah and Dr. Yoon. And Jody, we will now turn it over to you, our Director of uh, Health for the City of Stanford. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I will share my screen and go ahead with these slides. Okay, and all right. So um, this is from the um, Stanford Department of Health. We're working really hard to help keep our community safe. We have a lot of um, uh, response going on. And um, as Dr. Yoon said, we're always available to answer questions for you. Um, I like to start out with what's happening in our schools. You did hear Dr. Shah discuss that um, there is a high percentage of um, our young people that are getting sick, um, and we are we watch the school cases very carefully. It is on the rise again. Um, you know, we we got down uh, low for a little while, went up in September, went down, and then had a, started to see an increase recently. So we monitor this very carefully. We have a wonderful uh, team of school nurses and contact tracers that um, help with all our efforts in this area to keep our children safe. Um, the recent rise in school and uh, city cases though has outpaced the school cases very recently, but it is important to note that, um, uh, that we still have um, a large percentage of children. Um, they have been as high, the percentage of um, cases has gone as high as 32%, it's now at 21%. Um, and then both um, cases, uh, uh, staff and students are rising. Um, the uh, five to 11 year olds make up a disproportionate share of the cases. Um, they are a smaller percentage of our population, but they're making up a higher percent um, even then the 12 to 17 year olds. So again, as we've been saying and saying and saying over and over, um, it's important to get our children vaccinated. Um, we've been running a, a lot of vaccination clinics uh, to, to make these vaccinations accessible to our children. And it's really important that we work to keep them safe. Um, Dr. Yoon mentioned testing, and I wanted to uh, reiterate this because uh, you know, we the focus wasn't on testing for quite a while, but now as we see the cases rise, it's really important for us 
in order to know what's really happening, that people do get tested. And um, Dr. Yoon went through this a little bit, but if you have symptoms or have been in close contact with anyone with COVID-19, you should get tested. If you're fully vaccinated, test five to seven days after exposure and not fully vaccinated, test immediately and then test five to seven days after. I will be going through where you can get tested in Stanford, but it's, um, it, is, it does help us to understand what's happening um, with uh, the, the rates in our city and also with the um, Omicron variant. Um, if you have traveled recently, attended a large gathering, or been in a crowded or poorly ventilated indoor setting and are not fully vaccinated, it is important to get tested. Um, <clears throat> and then if you do test positive, um, stay home, isolate for 10 days, get rest and stay hydrated, stay in touch with your doctor. It's really important. As we tried to say from the beginning of this pandemic is to now is the time that if you don't have a healthcare provider to really make sure you connect with one. Um, we have um, uh, health centers throughout the city um, that are available for healthcare. So it's really important um, to uh, stay in touch with your doctor. And then you can contact your doctor or or us at the health department about your guidance for isolation um, and at any time really. Um, if you test negative for COVID-19, the virus was not, a, not detected, but if you have symptoms, you could still be positive. So you should isolate and then get retested. Um, if you don't have symptoms of COVID-19 and you are exposed, you were likely, you're likely not infected at the time of the test, but remember that incubation period is still 14 days and you could become sick. So it's really important to monitor symptoms, um, follow some mitigation strategies such as um, social distancing and masking, just to make sure that should you become sick in that 14 days, you don't expose others. Uh, you don't need to self-quarantine if you're uh, fully vaccinated. Um, but again, we encourage you to make sure you're masking and practicing distancing um, just in case. And then um, if, uh, you, the, if you're a contact um, of a case, the health department will provide guidance as to what you should do for your length of quarantine. So we have these testing locations throughout the city. Um, Stanford High has uh, a, a drive-through in the um, parking lot on Hillendale Avenue, and um, it's really easy. I drove by there on the weekend, and it's you know very accessible. Um, and then we have um, uh, Doc's Urgent Care on Main Street. Dr. Tabitha Ford is a private practice, uh, family practice, and she offers testing by appointment. Um, CVS is by appointment. And then the Stanford Hospital Wheeler Building um, also has um, appointments. Um, the Community Health Center is on Fifth Street um, is another place you can go, or the AFC Urgent Care on Summer Street. So um, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to make an appointment, um, you can go to the Stanford High Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on the weekends. If you feel more comfortable getting an appointment, so you know you have something set up, we have all these other options. So I wanted to also share with you where our, our uh, vaccination sites are this week. They do change um, from time to time. So it's important to either call the 203-276-7300 number or to check our website on the city website to check if there's been changes to these clinics. But we are again, trying to make sure they're accessible to everyone and that you can go um, for all ages. Uh, if you uh, recall, the child um, vaccine is a little bit of a different dose than the um, adult. So we want to make sure that um, everybody is getting what they're supposed to have. And um, you can go to the government center from four to eight um, on the afternoons, Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday, 10 to four. And that's for all ages. 
Um, Henry Street, the same thing. That's 137 Henry Street in the South End, accessible, open until seven o'clock. Um, and they also have just for five to 11 year olds upstairs on Mondays and Thursdays from one to seven. Um, Scalzi has all ages every, every day. They um, are run by the community health centers and it's a very popular site to go to. Um, Hunt Park and Jackie Robinson also offer the vaccines. Um, and it's a team, these are teams of um, healthcare providers, generally nurses who are administering the vaccines. They're trained, they understand the vaccine, they understand what, uh, what to do to help you and um, or, you know, just really wanna make sure that everyone is safe. Um, we try to make it as comfortable as possible, even for the kids. Um, KT Murphy and Westover schools are having some clinics this week. Um, and those again are for the children. Um, and we encourage people to take advantage of those times on the weekends. So that's what I have. I will stop sharing. And thank you so much, Jody, for that helpful information. And I want to thank again, Dr. Shaw and Dr. Yoon for your extremely helpful updates. And just to take a moment too to thank all of our health uh, frontline workers, nurses, doctors, all of our health experts at Stanford Health in the city of Stanford and, and our community partners for all of your work on the front lines this past almost two years now that it's been. Um, you've just been so devoted to our city, working so many long days and, uh, you know, risking your lives to keep us all safe. So thank you. Um, and this, these updates tonight were extremely helpful. Uh, we hope for those tuning in that you, I always learn something new whenever I hear uh, briefings from Stanford Health and from Jody. So this was really valuable. Um, and we hope that you, you know, heard the messages tonight that, you know, we are seeing an uptick in cases and increase in hospitalizations. And, you know, my biggest takeaway from tonight is that, you know, the majority, as Dr. Shaw said, 75% of those being hospitalized are those who are unvaccinated. So it's the, the best way that you can protect yourself and your family and to protect others uh, to get vaccinated if you're eligible. You heard from Jody the, the resources that the city of Stanford is providing uh, with free uh, vaccination sites. I had an opportunity to stop by Scalzi Park today to visit the CHC uh, vaccina vaccination site. Um, it's a heated tent, so you can go in. Um, there was a, a small line, but uh, it, it took, uh, it was pretty quick to, to get through it. Um, and if you bring your kids, they're eligible. They had great uh, Mickey Mouse stickers. Uh, so uh, definitely make sure to take advantage of these uh, free uh, vaccination sites uh, so you can get vaccinated and get your booster. Um, and then, of course, all the recommendations that we've been putting out from the city and that you heard today uh, from our doctors and from Jody to make sure to wear your mask if you're indoors. Um, especially since we're in a high uh, community transmission mode right now. Uh, make sure if you can to try to uh, have ventilation inside to keep a door open or to limit your gatherings to, to outdoors if, if possible, especially during this holiday season. And then remember all the, uh, the W's. I know uh, Dr. Shah, your, your team I think coined the W's of watching your distance, wearing your mask, uh, washing your hands. Um, so uh, please continue to take precautions. I know that Everyone is probably so tired of this uh, pandemic and we're so ready for this to be over, but I know that we're so close. If we can all just hang in there a little bit longer, be responsible, take these precautions to protect yourself and your family over the holidays. I'm optimistic that come new year, we can hopefully be over this hump and that as we continue to get more people vaccinated and more people get their boosters um, that we can overcome this this pandemic. So thank you everyone for, for tuning in tonight. Um, for more information or if you have any questions, um, feel free to visit our website, stanfordct.gov, or you can always email us at the mayor's office at mayor's office at stanfordct.gov if you have any questions or if we can help you in any way with getting out uh, information. Um, so with that, I just want to again thank our uh, tremendous panel tonight for being here, Dr. Shah, Dr. Yoon, Jody, thank you for the valuable uh, resources and uh, make sure to tune in for our next uh, COVID update, which will be uh, weekly on Tuesday nights. And we hope everyone has a safe and healthy rest of your week. So thank you everyone.